This is another video of SQL Server 2012 Integration Services Series. I am Reza Rad, uh, SQL Server MVP, author and trainer. Uh, in previous video we talked about uh, an introduction to SQL Server Integration Services 2012 and what is the ETL terminology and what is uh, what ETL stands for and you know, what SSIS can do for us and um, we run an import and export wizard and talked about different options in import and export wizard and take a quick look at SSDT which is SQL Server Data Tools and is our main development environment. In this video I will talk about control flow tasks. Okay, uh, in uh, SSIS we actually uh, have an execute table uh, uh, we have an executable core which is a package. Uh, an SSIS package is look like um, an executable application, but this doesn't actually uh, interact with the user. This is just an executable application and which will be run in a server as a scheduled job overnight or, or uh, over an, a scheduled uh, time. Packages uh, actually can uh, can call each other as you might have different functions can call each other. For example, uh, here uh, as our main uh, executable option is package. Packages can call each other. Packages are files with uh, DTSX extension. Each package uh, is a XML uh, code behind that file with DTSX extension. And Packages are exist in a project. For example, in one project you might have 10, 20 packages. These packages can see each other, can call each other and work with each other. SSIS engine are able to run package. So if you want to run this package, you need SSIS engine. If you deploy your packages to, if you save your packages to another server and want to run these packages on the, another server, you need a SSIS engine to, in, to be installed there. So, what is our package components? Uh, package contains flow of execution. Uh, this uh, is what we call this as control flow, and this video is all about control flow. Uh, flow of execution shows that um, which uh, part of uh, package will be executed first and which part will be executed next, which part are executed uh, simultaneously as parallel. Uh, package might contain data transfer structure. Actually, most of packages in the real world have uh, data transfer structure, which actually we um, create our ETL uh, stuff there or data transfer structure called as data flow. We will talk about data flow in future videos. We uh, actually as a SSIS developer you will spend lots of your time in data flow to create a data flow structure. Package contains event handlers. For example, if some part of package or a specific task in a package um, failed, then uh, we then uh, an event tries and email something to someone specific. Um, or if um, on pre-execute of, of something, we check uh, something else on pre-execute uh, of a data flow, we can check connections, something like that. Package contains variables and parameters. Variables are for interaction uh, uh, between tasks inside the package and parameters are the way that we interact between packages. Connection managers. Each package uh, might have different connection managers, a connection to database, another connection to file, another connection to HTTP uh, web address. So. In control flow, in control flow we have execute tables. Each execute table can be a unit that is uh, that can be executed. And uh, we have control flow tasks. Control flow tasks are tasks that can be executed 
you can just execute that task separately or execute this inside a, a, a container. We have containers that uh, contains one or more tasks and you can execute the whole container together. Uh, a package might contain uh, one or more containers uh, or without container, uh, just with tasks. And we have execution path, which we call this as precedence constraint. This is uh, where we define that which task or which executable will be uh, executed first and which one will be executed next. And we can set um, some conditions here. For example, if uh, something happened, then go to uh, task number two. If something happened, go to container number three, something like that. Control flow contains variables. As I said before, variables are um, location that we store uh, values from uh, one or uh, from a task or from somewhere else, and we use this in another task. We use variable inside packages, and we do not use these between uh, to pass the uh, values between uh, between packages. Okay, uh, we have different types of uh, control flow tasks and I categorized them in six main categories. Uh, we have some DBS, D, DB administration tasks, for example, backup database, history cleanup, sharing database, transfer logins, something like that. These kind of tasks are specific for database administration. In this course, we will not talk about all of these database administration tasks because this are, these are much more database administration related. And we have some kind of notification tasks like message queue, notify operator, send mail. These tasks are uh, for notifying uh, an event or something like that to someone. For example, if uh, our data flow structure uh, was successful, we can send the mail to someone, or if it failed, we can send a, a, a message, an important message with the exact error message uh, detail as a body of message to someone who is a support guy for our ETL packages. We have some kind of tasks that work with data, data flow, Execute SQL, which is for executing SQL uh, queries, uh, SQL queries or any SQL statements in uh, database, in every database. We have bulk insert, we have data profiling task. These are tasks that works mm, with uh, data structures, for example, with a flat file as a data structure or with database or with XML data. We have XML task to uh, actually um, different style of XML to validate the XML, to merge two XML and to differentiate between the two XMLs. We have CDC control, which I will talk about that, uh, which um, work with change data capture feature of database. We have some execution helper tasks like execute package task and expression task. Execute package task will help us to execute another package as part of this package and uh, something like call another package. And expression task, which actually we said we use some kind of expression. I will talk about this expression and we use those expression to fill a uh, variable uh, to fill something into a variable value and then use that variable. We have some external resources tasks. These ta these are tasks that works with external resource, for example, execute process task, which execute a binary application or an executable application. Uh, file system task, which helps us to move, rename, and delete uh, copy files, FTP task to get information from FTP or send something to FTP web service task and WMI data reader and event watcher task to work with uh, WMI feature of Windows. 
data mining query and any other stuff that work with external resources like analysis, analysis services, processing and execute detail task. We will talk about all of these uh, tasks. And we have a script task with, which uh, doesn't fit in any of these categories because we can do anything in that script task and we can write uh, actually applications in not all applications but some kind of application that doesn't interact with the user uh, with .NET Framework 4 with either C Sharp or Vivid.NET and yeah as uh, we can do everything in C Sharp or Vivid.NET with .NET Framework 4 so we can call this script task as a general purpose task because we can do everything that actually cannot be fulfilled in other categories. So this is our control flow task. We will talk about uh, all categories and most of these tasks. Um, uh, not much about DB administration, but all other categories. Okay, uh, we said that inside packages we have some variables. Variables are um, something like variables that we use in uh, our programming environment. When you write a program you uh, define variables, you fill some values inside the variables, you pass some values to another method with variables. Um, here we use variables uh, to pass some values between uh, tasks so variables are actually uh, the way that we use uh, for internal interactions between packa uh, inside package. We can define variables scope. For example, a variable can be in scope of all package. Another variable can be in a scope of a specific container. That container, for example, just contains three tasks and just those three tasks can see that variable and use that value, uh, value of that variable. Variables contains, uh, variables have a data type. Data types in SSIS is a bit different than data type in .NET Framework languages or SQL Server or any other databases. Uh, these are some specific data types that are generic and can be mapped to SQL Server databases or any other databases data type. For example, string data type, integer data type, or something like that. Variables can have default values. For example, you can set a default value for your uh, current year variable, something like that. Variables uh, can contain expression. Expression is uh, used when we want to uh, calculate value of each variable with some dynamic uh, codes. For example, we want a variable to calculate uh, current date. For example, we want a variable to calculate first um, date of finan current financial year. We can actually use expression to do that. Uh, we will talk about expression in a completely separate um, video. Okay, we said that uh, packages contains connection managers. We have different types of connection managers. Those connection managers that uh, work with database, uh, which are um, different types of connection managers, for example, OLEDB, ADO.NET, ODBC, these are all working with uh, connection managers. For example, we can use OLEDB to connect with uh, to connect to SQL Server. We can use ODBC to connect to uh, DB2 or any other databases. We have some kind of file connection managers, uh, which actually point to the location that file exists. It has some connection string and some other features some other options, sorry. Uh, we have web connection managers. These web connection managers can uh, uh, connect to a specific web URL and we have some other connection managers which we will talk about all of those in this video and future videos. In next video I will talk about execute SQL task and what is usage of execute SQL task 
and different samples of how we can use this execute SQL task.